Next, we're going to define what a subformula of a well-formed formula or first-order formula is. So, we say that B is a subformula of a formula A if B is identical to A, or we look at various other examples and define this recursively. So, for example, if A has the form not C, then B is a subformula of A if it's defined to be a subformula of C. If A has the form C circle D, where circle is any of our other Boolean connectives, then B is a subformula of A if it's a subformula of either C or D, or both of them. And finally, if A is of the form for all X C, then B is a subformula of A if B is a subformula of C. So essentially what we want to do is determine all of the formulae that occur within A and they're all defined to be subformula. So the first thing to note is that a subformula is in fact a well-formed formula and basically the set of all subformula of A are all of those well-formed formula that occur in A, including, including A itself. And you can go through this recursive definition to verify that. But let's look at a particular example. So we'll again look at our common well-formed formula example that we've had before. So x equal to y implies for all x, x less than y. And we can see here that x equal to y is an atomic formula that occurs within this larger formula A. So we know that x equal to y is a subformula. And this comes from combining number three and number one here, because x equal to y is a formula, so b is identical to that one, and this is a subformula of this form. So here is c, and c is identical to itself, so it's a subformula using this connective, or this um, part of the definition here, number three. Similarly, for all x, x less than y is the subformula of D, if we look here. And so both of these are subformula of our well-formed formula. We have to go a step deeper to note that at the same time, x less than y is another atomic formula that occurs within this larger formula. But this one is applied by rule 4. So there are three subformula of this well-formed formula, x equal to y for all x, x less than y, and x less than y. Okay, so now that we've defined subformulae, we can define what it means to form this, the abstraction of a well-formed formula. So, to write the abstraction of a formula, we need to iter iteratively identify the shortest possible subformula of A that contain non-Boolean symbols and replace each one of those by fresh Boolean variables. So essentially, the abstraction is going to be a well-formed formula in our Boolean logic that looks like the corresponding well-formed formula in predicate logic. So essentially, what the abstraction is doing is stripping out all of the non-Boolean symbols replacing them by Boolean variables, and identifying what the corresponding Boolean formula of this first order formula looks like. Okay, so here the abstraction simply looks at the relationship between the Boolean connectives. So if we consider this example, x equal to y or not x equal to y, in the abstraction we simply need to identify the shortest possible subformulae that contain non-Boolean symbols. So here, the only non-Boolean symbols are the x's, the y's, and the equals. And so here is a the smallest subformula containing these non-Boolean symbols. So we will box this and replace every box by a fresh Boolean variable. So, for example, there's no p that occurs anywhere here, so we'll replace x equal to y by p and all instances of x equal to y. So the abstraction of this well-formed formula is P or not P.
and we'll do many other examples in class more complicated ones. But the reason we're looking at the abstraction is because this is how we define what tautologies and tautological implications are in first order logic. So we say that a formula A is a tautology and denote it as usual if and only if the abstraction of A is a tautology. So essentially we're using the exact same definition of tautology and simply what we're doing is looking at, as we defined it tautologies before, looking at only the relationship between the connectives. So for any first order formula that have more meaning, we're going to get rid of that additional meaning, look only at its corresponding well-formed formula in Boolean logic and determine if that is a tautology or not. So for example, if we again look at determining whether the formula x equal to y or not x equal to y is a tautology, we first take the abstraction of this, which we so, saw from the previous slide is p or not p, and then we do determine if this is a tautology or not in the same way. So look at different states and identify if every state makes this statement true. Leave it as an exercise for you to think about whether this well-formed formula here is a tautology or not. So remember you have to figure out what the abstraction of this formula is and then use that to determine if it is a tautology or not. In a similar way we can define tautological implication. So we write that gamma tautologically implies A if and only if the abstractions of each of those of the formula in gamma tautologically imply the abstraction of A. So we first need to consider all of the hypotheses in gamma here, take all of their abstractions, also take the abstraction of A, and then use our original definition of tautological implication to determine if this is a tautological implication. So for example, we could ask whether x equal to y tautologically implies x equal to y or for all x, phi of x. This means we'd have to take the abstraction of this statement and of this one and then use our definition of tautological implication to determine that. So here you want to ensure that, for example, x equal to y, the abstraction is p. At the same time, we would replace any other occurrence of x equal to y with p. And then here is another subformula which contains non-Boolean symbols. So we would replace this by, for example, Q. And then you can determine whether P tautologically implies P or Q. Okay, so that brings us to the end of the videos to cover 4.1. In class, we'll look at the definition of substitution because it's rather complicated and more helpful to go through that in real time instead of through the videos. But you can read the notes and the slides here um, to help you to prepare if you would like.